and welcome to the latest episode of the Northern Ireland Women's Football Show with me, Jana McCabe. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Glentorn goalkeeper Ellie Scott and Siobhan Bell from St James Swiss. Thank you both for joining me today. Ellie, I'll start with you. Obviously, you're not going to be playing the start of the season with the injury. How is recovery going so far? It's going really well at the minute. I've On Monday, I'm going to start running, so it'll be... It's been 180, 85 days since my injury, but who's counting? But yeah, it's been going really well. I've been doing lots of plyometrics, lots of weight training, and then starting running now. So it's been a it's been a smooth process so far, and excited to move to the next step with doing more stuff, feeling like normality, being out with the team and stuff like that. So it'll be good. You said there you, how many days it was. How difficult has that been? I'm sure it's been difficult. It's been really challenging, especially missing the last part of the season, which was like the most crucial part in whether deciding whether we win the league, being in the Champions League, and then obviously the Irish Cup final, missing out playing at Windsor Park. But the team's been like amazing support and having them all around me supporting me. But the most challenging part like was between my actual injury and then the surgery, because it's basically, you're just trying to do prehab to get your legs strong, but there's no real, benefit but after I get surgery it's like a more of like a process building towards the final goal and then it's like trying to get back but between the op between operation and before like when I had the injury it was just nothing and just watching the team play without anything to be doing myself. And before you had the injury you were having a superb season you must have been proud of how that went. Yeah it was it was amazing my first first season in the biggest league in Northern Ireland and it was just amazing like going from playing in Division 1 with the Spring Rangers to the up in quality playing in the Premiership Division was just amazing playing against obviously and playing with all Northern Ireland internationals likes of Demi Vance it was just amazing experience the high tempo of training and then playing in big matches massive crowds it was just amazing. Just how much of a jump was that? Obviously, Lisbon Rangers are now a Premiership side, but now when you were saying when you left them, they were Division One. Like, there's a big difference. Like, yeah, it was a massive jump, and then I joined with about seven days, so fourteen days till the start of the season. I had a few weeks to prepare, but then as soon as I joined the team, they were all so welcoming, and then like being there from when I first joined the first training sessions, the intensity was like immense. It was so high quality, and then. Our first game we sort of eased into it. It was it wasn't the wasn't one of the top teams, so it was like a nice ease into it. It was Derry at home, so nice way to start start off the campaign, but it was a massive jump. Even the teams like Derry, it's a massive jump compared to some of the division one teams we played and it was amazing. But especially playing some of the bigger teams, it was just like levels above and but I was really glad to have been given the opportunity to do it. And Siobhan, you're all, also out with injury at the minute. I've got two injured players. I feel so bad for the you. You're not too far away from coming back, though. Oh, so I um, hurt my knee in January um, during the futsal league, and I tore my MCL, but I didn't need surgery or anything, and I'm due, due to be back in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Yeah, so I might miss the first couple of games of the season, but I'm excited to get back. Just like Ellie, you've kind of had to miss some big games, including that recent futsal victory. Just how challenging is it being on the sidelines? Um, yeah, it's obviously a struggle. You want to be on the court, especially in futsal, obviously, with the Northern Ireland athletes. Like it's, it's a different tempo compared to what it is at club level. Um, and obviously playing big teams like Belgium are ranked 12th in Europe and we're 24th, I think, um, in Europe. So obviously that was a massive step for us to get beaten on the first day, but then obviously a massive victory on the second game. Um, but watching it on the sideline, you're proud as punch, obviously. But yeah, I wanted to be on, on there with my teammates, but cheering them on is all I could do at the meantime. So I'll do that happily. I, you were more than cheering them on. You were giving some coaching as well. <laughs> so you were right involved in it. Yeah, um, obviously our coach Keith, he, he just asked if I wanted to come along for the weekend and still be a part of the team and help out. Um, obviously, whether that's setting up the change room for the girls or making sure they're all hydrated or cheering them on from the sideline or giving any tips that I can see from the side. Um, obviously because I play I get a different outlook of it so it's it was nice to be involved and yeah I really really enjoyed it. You're used to being in charge when you're playing for St James's what was it like in the futsal side of it and not being on the pitch with them but kind of giving them tips and tricks? Yeah obviously it's it's something I do with, um, with St James's football level obviously if it's all different there's different rules um, and then obviously it's a different level like I say but um, yeah it's it's easy enough obviously we're all athletes I suppose you can say so we we do take everything into consideration and nobody takes it badly it's always good critique I suppose and 
we all want to make each other better and play better and obviously work hard as a team and we want to get to the highest level we can and perform as best as possible so everybody yeah everybody takes it on board and Ellie talked a little bit about her routine to try to get back to fitness what's yours been like so far um yeah I'm, I'm doing well we um well with my physio she's just kind of said to take it easy at the gym and start building up like weights for strength training and stuff um I'm allowed to, I've already started running now in the last couple of weeks um so yeah it's just kind of getting that wear and tear away now and being able to turn it sharp char sharp turns or trying to get them ball at ball, ball my feet again and then just kind of easier than that way it's just kind of easy easy passes at the minute nothing too strenuous but hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll be back back on the pitch and raring to go fingers crossed fingers crossed and Ellie <laughs> what was your routine been like since the surgery has happened since the surgery at the start of my surgery it was every single day it wasn't anything strenuous but just basic things which before my injury you wouldn't have even think would hurt or take so long to do but it was just like lifting my leg tensing my quad trying to get mobility back because it took me about a month or two to be able to do bike rotations because that's to try and get mobility back. And then I was on the bike about half an hour a day. And then I was doing lifting my leg and all those things for the first month or so. And then I started to add, add weights into it after that. And then it's progressively gotten more, more heavy and stuff like that. And now it's three times a week I'm doing quad sessions, one time a week hamstring sessions and then pull sessions days in between. And it's just every single day doing something. And you're also still in school, so how are you balancing it all? It's hard because after after my injury, I missed like a week of school, and then I was in. Then after surgery, I missed a solid like month of school, and then I eased myself back into it. And it was really difficult getting back into the swing of things, and obviously having crutches, and then it was really difficult getting places. But it's been difficult, especially trying to fit everything in. I have to come home from school straight to the gym for two hours, back home do ice mobility, and it's just, it just takes up the whole day. I really admire how you've done it and for somebody who's so young you just seem so disciplined and you just seem so keen to get back as obviously as, with such a good season as you were having but you must be really proud of yourself and how you've kind of reacted to the setback. Yeah I feel like I just have to have these small goals in my head the goals are getting me through it because since I tore when I tore my ICL it's the time of perspective coming back it's the end of the season if I tore it a month later, I feel like I'd, I wouldn't have as much of a drive because I'm hoping to, now I'm hoping to get back for the end of the season. And I'm just thinking if I don't do my rehab that day, it'll delay my rehab, like delay my comeback further. So I'm just thinking every day, like I want to get back and I've just every day never slacking and it's always rehab, rehab, rehab. That's my life. Well, it seems like hopefully it'll be not too long until you're back out in that pitch. Yeah, so on, on Monday I'm starting running again. It'll just be short tempo runs, but it's just getting back onto the pitch and back with the girls because at the minute I'm just in the gym by myself. All the girls are on the pitch and I'm just in the gym two hours. No one else is there, but being with the girls and surrounded by them and it'll just be like amazing getting back into it, putting my boots on again. So hopefully after I start running, I'll be able to do ball, ball work soon enough. As you said, who's counting? No, yeah. you're, you're counting twice. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a short break here in the studio, but we're going to head over to Colin, who caught up with some of the futsal team after their first game against Belgium. Over to you, Colin. It won't be long now before the draw for the inaugural Women's Futsal World Cup takes place, and with our Northern Ireland girls buoyant following some great performances in their recent doubleheader against their Belgian counterparts, it's no surprise that the team can't wait to learn of their opponents in the competition. We caught up with head coach Keith Gibson and some of his players recently to hear their thoughts ahead of the tournament. Looking forward to the draw very soon for the World Cup groups. Um, it'll be much tougher. Previously there's been preliminary rounds. Uh, this year we're straight into the main round so we could draw some really, really big fish uh, in, that, in that draw coming up. So we, we'll be watching the draw through from behind us a team of it, yeah. Um, obviously the World Cup the World Cup's coming up, so it's really just getting people in, seeing how we are, seeing how we play together, trying out different things and see if they work. First women's futsal World Cup, so that's something to really look forward to. We've had three Euros now, um, and a lot of these girls have been in all three of those Euros. Um, so yeah, to have a World Cup to look forward to, who doesn't want to play in a World Cup? It's fantastic, isn't it? And who doesn't want to coach in a World Cup? Yeah, really looking forward to that. That's a totally different game futsal than football. What's the big differences for you? Yeah, definitely. Compl like, completely nowhere near the same. Like um, a lot quicker, just like non-stop. Like there's nowhere to hide in a futsal pitch. Like you, you're always you have to be on, on your ball. Like, but um, 
yeah, just really fast. Really, you have to keep keep on your toes the whole way through. For the football, it's so different. Football, you're running, you're making the forward passes, futsal, it's all defeat, um, playing really smart blocks, and just making sure you're in your shape. But really good sport. Really enjoy it. Thank you Colin for that. I'm excited to see how those Northern Ireland girls get on that World Cup in October. We'll go back to the futsal. Just firstly that game obviously wasn't the best for them but the day after what a performance. Yeah the girls really took it in their stride and obviously we just took on board all the coaches feedback and we watched the game that night and obviously kind of learned Belgium's style of play and how we can kind of cut that out and give ourselves an advantage in our own game and we came out on Sunday and the girls were just brilliant from start to finish. Everybody was working hard for each other, plenty of communication and obviously we got plenty of goals which is nice for us and the only time we conceded in, on the second day was from a flag keeper which we don't normally defend against but we did quite well and I think obviously just towards the end tired legs had set in and we let one in it, so it wasn't, wasn't nice for our keeper not to keep a clean sheet. Um, but overall the performance was amazing and yeah, the girls, the girls are buzzing and they're still buzzing <laughs> after it. <laughs> it's massive for us. Yeah, I'm sure it'll take a little bit of time to sink in, kind of that'll keep the momentum going hopefully for that World Cup. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's obviously going to be a good challenge for us. Um, we were meant to have, it was meant to be the Euros originally in May here, but um, they changed it to a World Cup scheme and now it's not going to be until October. So obviously we're still waiting patiently for the draw to see where we're heading or if we're hosting <laughs> and then obviously it's going to be up against um, higher standard and yeah, we're really looking forward to it. All being well you'll be back and ready for that World Cup. Anywhere you're fancying for it? Anywhere you want to go? Um, anywhere really. Um, we've been to Lithuania and Serbia the last um, two times we've been away and it's nice to be somewhere different. There's only so much of Spain you can see, that's what I always say. So yeah, it'd be nice to have somewhere different and um, it's always nice to get away with the girls. And I think um, having those trips away, you come together more off court and then that obviously helps your performance on court. So yeah, it's always nice. But yes, I'll, I'll hopefully definitely be back by then. <laughs> I suppose if you're thinking outside football, you're kind of thinking somewhere you want warm and like nice, but it doesn't really matter because you're going to be indoors anyway. No, definitely not. Yeah, you get the odd little walk now and again just to stretch your legs in between games or after games. Um, but obviously depending on the weather as well, you don't really want to be going out in the lash and rain if you go somewhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, sometimes the sun can be too much too and we obviously have to stay hydrated. So yeah, it's just a short walk anywhere sunny we go. and. Yeah, it's, it's obviously just more hotels and team meeting rooms, but it's all worth it in the end when we get on the court. Speaking of weather, something that definitely is affected by weather is NIWFA games. How does that kind of your game with football, outdoor football, impact indoor football? Like, is there transparent skills or is it kind of so different? Um, yeah, there's obviously a lot of different rules, but um, in terms of skills, obviously it, it, it helps. Um, especially in futsal, it's a lot quicker, so um, you need to have good feet and um, obviously your, your stamina needs to be a bit better because you're just doing kind of sharp sprints and whatever else and then obviously transforming into football then um, outdoors you, you need that longer sort of marathon running <laughs> um, stamina but yeah it's obviously it's it's a lot different but a lot of the skills can be transferred over. Seems I don't know how you remember all the rules and keep them like I'd be getting confused I'd be doing futsal rules for football and so uh, there's too many different ones obviously one of the main ones is there's no throw in in futsal it's it's a kick in um, and then obviously there's different ones where like you're being timed before you take your kick in, you only have four seconds. Whereas throw-ins, a, a lot of people in football take, try and take their time to get the clock down. And that's obviously not allowed in futsal, so it's good that way that it keeps the game flowing. And Elia, hopefully all being well, you're going to be on the plane going to Europe. You don't know yet either where? No, we don't know where. So we're hoping to have a good draw, but it'll be, the draw will be at the end of this coming season. So for the, all the English teams, like when their league finishes, we'll be finding out then. European football maybe takes kind of a backseat for you guys because it's just so far away for you? We're still focusing on it. It's not like our main focus, but every match is its own. We don't prioritise every match. It's just we take each match as it comes. And then all the seniors have been away at the minute. So our first training session since they'd be back is Sunday. So we'll all be coming together for that. And then obviously as the time comes, we'll focus more on European football. And then, but we have to take each match as it comes because we've obviously got the league within that as well. So we can't take focus off the league because the league's one of our main priorities as well, but yeah. You've had a lot of experience yourself with the under-19 Northern Ireland squad. What's it like playing with so many senior girls though? Like it just must be inspirational for you. Yeah, it's really amazing to see where they've all come from because hopefully that's where I'll progress in the future and just like seeing like 
obviously how they play, what they do. And it's since Northern Ireland and Glen Torn, like there's quite a lot of Northern Ireland internationals in Glens. It's good to see the quality that I'd have to have. And obviously there's about six of the Glens in the senior Northern Ireland team. So playing with them week in, week out, it'll help me hopefully in the future, just like being with them and obviously like on the pitch and off the pitch bonding, being with them and just five times a week. And it's amazing having them in the team, the quality that they have and just looking up to them, obviously like, Three or four years ago, they're the players you see on the TV on the week, and then it's just amazing playing with them now, and then the quality that they have is just immense. You mentioned off camera earlier about how much of a support network you've had, and there's been some of those stars have been really helpful to you. Yeah, Demi Vance, she's in Guntorn at the minute. She tore ACL a few years ago, and then she's been with me. I've been asking her questions about ACLs and like where she was in her point of recovery and. She always she always tells me off for having a bit of a limp when I'm walking around, but <laughs> I'll just not tell her that you walked up a lot of stairs. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the the support work network from everyone's just been incredible. Even people that haven't torn their ACLs just checking in on me and then helping me. Like it, every single person on the team's just been incredible and just helping me through every step of the way, putting their arm around my shoulder. Like they all knew the last few matches of last season were so tough for me, just being away from it all. But I wouldn't have got through without them. They've helped me so much. And having the likes of Cara Hamilton, Simone McGill and Demi Fans who've all torn their ACLs, that just must give you so much confidence that you know you're going to come back stronger because they've come back and look at their performances now. Yeah, it's been amazing. Like having people that you know and have come back from this injury and to massive extents and been back better than they were before. I've been talking to them all and it's just hearing what their journey was like and it's been difficult for them, but then they got there in the end and then they've been back better than before. And then that's one of the main things people say about ACL injuries. If you come, like you're better than before, you build up so much muscle in your legs and then seeing it in person, like it's fine hearing about that, but when you like see it in real life and see they've actually came back and they're flying in England and international stage as well, scoring goals, it's just incredible. And just nice to know that there is a way back into this and hopefully I'll be there soon. Fingers crossed. And Siobhan, is it kind of the same for you that you just want to come back stronger and you're just ready to get started now? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, it's it's hard when you get injured. Um, I've been through a, quite a couple of injuries um, and I probably don't have many years left in my legs, to be honest. But obviously, when, when you're out injured and you, you miss it and you miss being around the team and just trying to give your all for them, it's yeah, it's hard. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting back and can't wait to be in amongst the atmosphere. And obviously, just that whole social aspect as well is, is important. We're going to take another break here in the studio and catch up with Rachel Barlow, who looks back on the two big games that Northern Ireland had in their Euro qualifying campaign. Over to you, Rachel. Northern Ireland drew 0 0 with Malta in the first match of their UEFA Women's Euro 2025 qualification campaign. Tanya Oxtoby's team dominated possession in League B Group 3 encounter, which ended 0-0. However, they had to settle for a point in Belfast after failing to break down the visitors' resolute defence. Oxtoby's team pushed forward right from the off in front of 2,000 fans. Right back Rebecca McKenna had the first effort on goal, her low drive from distance going inches past the post. The home side had plenty of the ball in the opening 20 minutes, However, they, er, they found it hard to fashion chances. Just before the break, McGill had the ball in the net. However, referee Maria Marotta ruled it out as she handled the ball in the build-up and therefore the goal did not stand. It was a harsh call as TV replays appeared to show that McGill did not touch the ball after initially slipping inside the area before quickly getting to her feet and slotting the ball home. Northern Ireland continued to press right up to the final whistle However, they simply could not find a way through the visitors' solid defence. Tanya Oxtoby's side bounced back from a disappointing opening draw against Malta to claim all three points in Zeneca after a 3-1 win. Coach Stuart McLaren took charge of the side after manager Tanya Oxtoby was unable to travel to Bosnia due to illness. However, the manager picked the team and she made three changes from the Malta game. Belle, Emily Wilson and Carrie Halday making her first start replaced Marissa Callahan, Cara Hamilton and Julie Andrews. The visitors' goals came from Lauren Wade, Megan Bell and Simone McGill and Maria Milinakovic on target for the hosts. It was a great second half performance from third seeds Northern Ireland against the second seeds in the group and they thoroughly deserved the win which will give them the much needed boost for their next games. 
That makes it four points from two games in Group 3 and sends Northern Ireland top for now. Next up, it's a crunch double header with top seeds Portugal on May 31st and June 4th. Thank you, Rachel, for that. Ellie, two huge results for Northern Ireland in their opening games of the campaign. You must be happy saying that. Yeah, it was obviously good. The first match was a bit disappointing, drawing, but they feel like they should have won. But then to bounce back in the second match and perform how they did, getting lots of goals and then performing to the standard they know they can. And then obviously Kerry starting her first match and then she's been with us in the 19. So that was good seeing her get her first start. We just talked about that first game. Some decisions didn't go Northern Ireland's way, but you kind of see that fighting back kind of mentality in that second game. They really did go for it. Yeah, obviously they were disappointed and they feel like they had a goal wrongfully disallowed and then probably just added a bit of fire to them and just made them really want to win this next game. And obviously the drawing the first game against that team put them back in their hopes of qualifying. So to come out like they did in Bosnia and just was an amazing performance really watching it. It was just great. You mentioned there Kerry Halliday, somebody that you know very well playing alongside. It must be great to see players from the squad in the under-19s push on and make that senior squad. Yeah, it's obviously great coming up with the ranks with her from 17s onwards. It's just been great seeing her develop and then getting our last match with her was the Northern Ireland versus Ireland. We won 1-0 in September time. That was one of my last matches with Northern Ireland before my injury and then she scored the winner that match. Then Tanya was at that match, so probably seeing her there as well. And then getting to train with the seniors, playing with the seniors, getting in the squad. It's just amazing to see how the pathway is like that as well. And how difficult is it as a goalkeeper? We obviously have a lot of players that are trying to get in, like in defenders, forwards, midfielders, but there's only one space, you know, there's only one keeper that starts every week. It must be difficult, you know, you just have to be week in, week out pushing for that space. Yeah, it's really difficult. Like probably three or four years ago, I was the number two for Lisburn, number two for Glentor, number two for Northern Ireland, sorry. And, but during COVID, I feel like that's where I flicked the switch and then I just really was pushing to get number one. And then during COVID, I was out every single day working two, three hours a day playing football. And then I feel like when I came back from that, it was just like a new me. And then also I was number two for Northern Ireland in 2021, like under 17 level. We were away in Serbia and I was away then. And I feel like, sitting there play, sitting on the bench watching them play international matches against the likes of Spain I just that's when I knew I really wanted to push for this and play professional be number one and then since then it just switched back to my head and then I worked and worked and worked and then after a year or so I got number one for Northern Ireland and then 19th and 17th level and then number one started for Glen Torn when I went there so it was just incredible. Maybe when Northern Ireland qualify for that next year you'll be in the senior squad? Yeah, I'd hope so. Obviously, it'll be while coming back from this injury, but that's what I'm aiming for. I was aiming for seniors. That's my goal, ultimate goal, playing for Northern Ireland seniors. And then it's just work from there, get back into Glen Torn, swing in there, and then obviously playing for the 19s, getting starting there. I need to start for them first before I can even think about seniors. But I have to take each day by day and small goals, and then hopefully the goal, bigger picture, the biggest goal, obviously playing for Northern Ireland seniors, and that's, that's my objective, and I hope to be there someday. Fingers crossed. And Siobhan, a really tough group for Northern Ireland, but I think they've proved themselves in the first two games. Yeah, definitely. Like Ellie said, obviously they, they did um, get a, well, a poor result, is what we would say, but obviously a, a point to point. But yeah, we do think that they probably should have won. And obviously, like, if they obviously got the fire in their belly then after that because they were wrongfully disallowed, in my opinion, the goal should have stood. Um, and obviously then when they came out in the second game, they were in all guns blazing and got the result that they deserved. And Portugal next, like arguably probably on paper the hardest game of the group. Yeah, um, it's obviously going to be difficult, but obviously the team's working hard and I think they're working really well together and it's it's nice to watch and they play some good football, they create chances and we just hope they can take them, yeah. Back to yourself now, it's not very long. When this comes out, it's a couple of days until you play Camlock. A huge first game, you know, the people that are coming up, they want to prove a point. Yeah, of course, obviously Camlock have just been promoted this year, so obviously they're going to be the underdogs, as you would say, but um, they're obviously going to come out fighting and they want to prove that they deserve to be in the championship. Um, so it is going to be a really difficult game and we just need to be prepared and ready for them and play our own game and try and ease into this new campaign um, as best as we can and hopefully get the three points. I feel like I mention this every week now, but the championship just looks so difficult this year. It's hard to tell who's going to go. Yeah, there's obviously a lot more teams in it this year, so it is going to be that bit more competitive as well. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's fitting that into the season that we're not kind of used to. It's a longer season um, 
and you've got to fit holidays, injuries, everything into that. So you do need to have a strong squad and um, really push on. And a lot of teams are going to have that and making a lot of signings and it's going to be competitive. But I think we're ready for the challenge and we always enjoy it. So yeah, looking forward to it. How difficult is it whenever like a team like Lisbon Rangers obviously goes up and you must be a little bit like, phew, right, bye. And then you've got like Sion, and you've got Balamina and then you're getting the two from Division One. Like there's just so many teams. How can you like balance that all? Yeah, they all just kind of came out of nowhere, to be honest. Um, obviously, Balamina have come down again and they're they're one of our rivals. We've played them many times before and it'll be, we'll be looking forward to obviously that, that game again. Um, it's always It always puts on a good show. and. Um, we very rarely play Sion. I think we were due to play them once and it had to be cancelled. But um, yeah, we're looking forward to them. Obviously, they're they're coming down. They're quite a young squad now, so they're they're going to come out all guns blazing and probably want to fight to push their way back up again and prove a point. And then obviously the teams that have been promoted from Division One are coming up. Like you say, obviously they're they're classed as the underdogs and they're going to come out just the, the as well as they're us. So they're going to try and fight for as many points on the board as they can get and even as close to the ta top of the table as possible. You're certainly not used to tapping yourself. You score some absolutely amazing <laughs> goals. Is that your personal goal of the season? You've got a lot of NIWFA awards. Do you want this one this year? Um, yeah, obviously it's always nice to be um, recognised. And at the end of the day, I don't really take individual awards into consideration. It is always just a team sort of goal at the end of the season. Obviously you want to win, win trophies with the team and anything on top of that's always a bonus. But yeah, it's nice, it's nice to score a worldly. <laughs> And is that kind of the goal this year for St James is to win that championship and you know go up? Yeah, obviously we we have been in the championship a couple of seasons now and we're kind of finished third, fourth, um, sort of that mid table and obviously we want to kind of push up um, as high as we can and the teams are getting more competitive every year and stronger every year and obviously we just need to keep fighting um, and just try and get as much points as we can and yeah hopefully even get up and play against a lot of the tougher sides. We only really come across the bigger teams from the Premiership in cup games and. It is a big challenge and we do thrive on that because it just shows what we would be up against if we do get a promotion. You could be hearing the team tactics of who you could be playing against if you do get up. <laughs> <laughs> get all the tips off the keeper. God, no, definitely don't want to play against Ellie when she's back. She's a great goalkeeper and obviously likes the Glens and stuff we've played before in um, cup games, like I say. And um, yeah, they have, they've beat us heavily and it's, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth, but obviously it, it just shows that we do need to move on and push on that bit stronger and yeah give a bigger better bigger and better fight. Ellie a huge year for Glen Torn every year is huge for teams like that but you really want to make it be defending champions now and you want to push on and get that back to back trophies. Yeah obviously our main goal is to win the league retain all the titles Irish Cup and then do well in the Champions League but as Kim said our coach last year it's harder to it's harder to be chased than actually chase the title. So last year we had a bit of fire because the season before they lost out the league to Cliftonville and we were chasing the league, but now we're being chased. So it'll be a lot harder for us, And but we're pushing every week and then feel like we're getting stronger. The bond back as a team after being out for so long. So obviously our main aim, retain all the titles and then hopefully build on that. And obviously with another competition added in the Champions League. So when that, the time comes there, we're hoping to progress out that group and then go into the next round of qualifying, so that'll be good. And three new signings that have really boosted the squad? Yeah, obviously Amy Kerr, Sophie Keenan and Amy Neal, they've been massive additions to the squad and then seeing new people come in, add, give some um, like more depth in the squad and seeing how they progress, adding a new dynamic to the team, it's really helping us out. Wish you both the best of luck for the season ahead. I'm really hoping to see you both on the pitch very, very soon. Fingers crossed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it for this episode of the Northern Ireland Women's Football Show. Thank you so much for watching, but for now, goodbye from me.